Okay, the for function is a cool function that I like to use in Python, and it's very useful when you need to um, iterate through something. Um, let me get, just give you an example, and then I think you'll start to understand it. So let's say I have um, a phrase or a word. Um, word equals uh, marshmallow. Okay, I have no idea if that's how you spell it, but let's just assume it is. Um, now I'm going to do this for letter in word print letter. Let's just go ahead and see what happens. And it prints marshmallow. Now this variable letter is dynamically created for use in the for statement. And it doesn't have to be letter. It just makes sense that it's letter because there are marshmallows made up of a bunch of letters, but I could name it thingy for thingy in word print thingy. Okay. And it will do the exact same thing and it works fine. All right. But again, I think letter makes more sense. For letter in Word, print uh, letter. So what's great about the for statement is you can use it for a lot of different purposes. For example, let's say you have a uh, food list and it equals, remember to make a list, you have to use brackets. So my first food is um, steak. My next food is uh, sausage. Um, my next food is bacon. Um, Snowy's sitting right next to me, so I guess I'm thinking of things she would like. One thing she does not particularly like is kibble. Um, and another food that she does not like is broccoli. So, but these are my foods. And so I can now say for um, item in food list, print item. Let's see what happens. Ready? Steak, sausage, bacon, kibble, broccoli. Um, if I wanted them to print all in one line, I would just put a comma after item. Steak, sausage, bacon, kibble, broccoli. Um, and it will go through, it'll iterate, kept going through each of the items. So it might go through each of the things in a letter or in a word. It might go through each of the things in a list. Um, if you try to do it with a number, it won't really work. Let's see what happens. Um, number equals 67. Um, for uh, item in number, print item. I think this is just going to crash. Yep. Um, and it says here, type error. Int object is not iterable. So you're trying to go through the items in an int object, and it doesn't work. The only things that are iterable, in my mind, are lists, like food lists, or the letters in a word. But you know you can actually do a lot with this. And in fact, we're going to do something kind of cool with going through the letters of a word by saying something like this. Um, if we say alphabet equals um, A, B, C, D, oops, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. OK. Um, notice that I put the word alphabet in all capitals. It's a variable like any other, and I could have named it like this, alphabet. Um, but programmers tend to do something different with constants, variables that they don't intend to change at all. And the alphabet would be an example of a constant, something that is really never going to change. So I'm going to put it in all capitals to show you, the user, that it's a constant. But now I could say um, print uh, letter, oh, uh, for letter in, and you have to do it like this, for letter in alphabet print letter. Okay, and let's just see if it works. And it prints the entire alphabet. Okay, um, or I could do it <coughs> on one line and it prints the entire alphabet. We're going to be using this later. You'll see um, that we're going to be using stuff like this going through um, words letter by letter by letter because we're going to be doing some cool stuff with code breaking and creating co uh, codes. And you'll need to understand how to use the for command to do that. So now you know how to use the for command. Other commands that you should already know um, are while. So let's say import random. Okay. And we're going to say uh, uh, i equals um, random.rand int 0 comma 100 okay while i does not equal 34 or 45 okay um, print i and 
i equals random dot rand int zero comma one hundred. So actually, this should not be indented. There should be no colon here, and these should all be shifted back. So I think I do that. I did that by highlighting what I wanted shifted back and hitting shift tab, or I could hit tab and it would all move forward. Shift tab moves it all back. So while i equals 45, colon, these two things need to be indented, shift, print i, and then um, set a new random number. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to put a comma here so it doesn't have a whole bunch of different lines, and prints all the letters, and oh, it got 45 in two tries. That's amazing. Um, and unlikely. And then it took a little bit longer to get to 45. Um, let's see. Um, and actually, let's do let's do this. So you can see that it actually gets to 45. Print i. Um, and let's go ahead and run it. And the last number will be 45. Put the comma here so it all goes on one line. And the last number is 45. And the last number is 45. Took longer to get to 45 this time. So you know how, uh, what, how while statements work. And you also know how if statements work. Um, so we can have if in a while, if uh, i is less than 5, print i is less than 5. Okay, let's see how what happens here. So it's all in the while statement. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to get rid of this alphabet stuff just because I don't need it anymore. Um, so I use my random library and I'm using a while statement and an if statement. Okay, so how many times was it less than five? Um, well, three, i is less than five. Zero, i is less than five. One, i is less than five. Zero, i is less than five i is less than 5, and then eventually it got to 45 and stopped. So you definitely at this point in your coding career should understand how this program works. And if you don't, please um, create this program right here so that you really can, can tinker with it and make sure you understand it.